Rise and shine on Australia's Vision Christian Radio. You're on Rise and Shine with Fel and Matt all across Australia. And joining us on the line is an amazing woman of God, Cindy McGarvey. She's the National Director for Youth for Christ Australia. She's an author and uh, she's uh, in beautiful Townsville. How are you doing, Cindy? Hi, Matt. I'm doing well. I'm enjoying the beautiful Townsville sunshine. Oh, wonderful. Now, Cindy, we're chatting to you today because it's super exciting. You've got a new book that's launching, The Nature of Truth and Beauty. Can you tell us a little bit about the heart behind the book? Yeah, well, um, in 2020, I released a book called Lost Boys, Bring Them Home, because I was concerned about how the culture was toxic to young men. And a lot of young men are leaving the faith in droves and they're being impacted by uh, some, a lot of negative things in our culture. And so that, uh, that book went down really well because, I mean, people are still interested because it just hit a raw nerve. Mm. Um, however, I had a lot of requests from girls who said, mm. can you write something for girls? Mm. Because there's a lot of lost girls in our culture. And so... And in the church, and they, you know, they've lost the, um, I guess there's almost a lost knowledge of what it is to be a woman, and we've heard it in the media and everything. Um, You know, what is it to be a biblical woman? Mm. And so um, that's when I started researching and working out how to write a book for girls. Oh, I love that because it is interesting, isn't it, Matt? And and when we talk about women and what it means to be a woman, I've got daughters, Cindy, who are 12 and 16, almost 17. Matt, you're the same. You've got a daughter about the same age. Mm-hmm. What sort of themes did you find in your research? Yeah, well, basically I was going to just write a book and, you know, here's the facts, here's what's mm-hmm. happening, here's what you need to do, like, sort of a bit like um, Lost Boys, and I use the military analogy because I have – a military background. Mm. However, um, different young women said to me, you can't write like that for girls. Mm. And so I researched and researched and um, researched and I came across the writings. I had remembered that there was a woman, her name was Hannah Moore. She was part of the Clapham sect. They called them the Clapham sect, but um, William Wilberforce's group mm. with... Um, uh, you know, they, they were working for the abolition of slavery, but also a whole lot of other things to reform society. And that was 200 years ago, uh, you know. And there was one woman in that group, and her name was Hannah Moore. She was an educator of girls, both girls of the gentry and girls of the lower, you know, class, the girls who weren't educated. And um, she saw the same sort of issues where whatever context you're in, the girls um, struggle with the same sort of issues. And um, I started researching her writing. I dug deep down into the archives, and it was written in all this old English. She wrote wrote books for girls. And um, anyway, I was so fascinated, and I kept reading it to girls in my family. You know, I have daughters who were in their early 20s. I was reading it to my daughter-in-law. I was reading it to women my age and others, and I was going, this is incredible. We've not read anything like it, but we can't understand. You have to explain it all the time because it's written in old English. And it got to the point where they asked me, maybe you should just translate her writing into modern English so that we can all uh, understand it. And so that's how it came about. I translated it into, um, she has a book, uh, her original book was Essays uh, to Young Women. And um, so I titled this book, The Nature of Truth and Beauty, Timeless Instructions on Femininity and the Education of Daughters, because that is what she hits on. And um, so, yeah, so that's that's basically how it came about. So I I rewrote her book and then I did um, chapter summaries so that people could understand um, in case, you know, even though it was uh, translated, you know, it's hard, it's a little bit hard, but. A lot of people are loving it. And then I wrote a um, discussion points at the end so that people can take um, a group through and also personal reflection questions and prayer because sometimes you're confronted with something and you think, what do I do with it then? You know, 
with the issues that she raises. Yeah. So, Cindy, can you give us one of those issues, like be really practical? What is one point, for example, to, to give people a bit of a taste of what to expect when they're reading it? Well, um, one is dissipation. And we don't even use that word. No. Um, and so she does on dissipation. So dissipation is basically time wasting, like just being idle, not being purposeful and all that sort of thing. And so in the, her day, probably the girls just um, could really be idle, I guess, uh, especially the uh, girls who are more of the gentry and the aristocracy. But... Um, she encouraged them not to be idle. And I, it was just incredible. I started reading bits to young women about, you know, we get on the phones, we get on social media. We just sit around, we can sit around for ages and do nothing and just um, feed our mind with things that are not uplifting or that are not um, good for our soul, good for our mind, all that sort of thing. And she writes dissipation as a sin. I never thought of just time wasting and idleness as something that is not being good stewards of your time. Mm. So she writes a fair bit and she writes a whole chapter on it. And, oh, man, it was so convicting. And the girls have told me, oh, it just hits you straight in the heart. But we don't hear anything about that today. Yeah, it's such a good point, you know, and, you know, I was thinking, you know, in the book of James, it says, you know, anybody knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it's sinning. And the reality is we've all got a calling. We've all got something that we're meant to be doing. But so often we, we have, well, I like to call it a shadow mission, where you, you're doing something else that's not really your main mission that you're called to do. So I guess it's uh, such an important thing that we don't waste our time. We don't, you know, what's that other saying? Idle hands make for the devil's work, you know. You're sitting around doing nothing, you're going to get into trouble too. Um, So I'm also curious, you know, are you getting much feedback from those that have uh, read it so far? Are you getting some good positive feedback? Yeah, we're in early days, but um, the feedback I'm getting is really positive. It's like heart surgery, um, words like, uh, like, oh, I have to just read one chapter and then I have to think about it for days. I just can't go on because they feel so convicted and so challenged, Um, you know, because there's lots of topics. There's topics like, so that was just dissipation, but there's topics like um, conversation. How how do we have conversation and how, how, what is the difference between the way men talk and the way women talk? And um, very, very interesting. The other one, envy. I think women can harbour envy a lot in our hearts, especially if we're comparing ourselves to other women, especially through media, uh, uh, social media and things and the clothes we wear and all that. Um, uh, Our emotionalism, we can, you know how girls can fall for guys or get crushes and then, you know, it totally consumes them and they're lovesick and all this sort of thing. Um, She talks about that. She calls it, sentimentality but she says on the danger of sentimental and romantic connections um, true and false weak uh, meekness really challenging uh, thoughts on cultivation of the heart and temper in the education of daughters um, and the importance of religion especially to the female character oh, excellent. fantastic well, look if people want to find out more if they want to see your book where should they go Cindy uh, they should uh, at we're selling them first only on our website, and that's on our Youth for Christ Australia website, and that's yfc.org.au. And um, you can also order, there's two more books that come with it, and one is the um, a prayer book that I wrote. The girls were saying to me, oh, it would be great if you wrote a prayer book to help us, you know, uh, you know a lot of girls with anxiety, depression, understanding how to pray. So I wrote that, and then I wrote a journal with it with the beautiful quotes from from Hannah Moore, who was, as I said, a contemporary of um, Jane Austen and Pride and Prejudice. It was very, very beautiful. Fantastic. And you're doing a, a launch in Townsville this week. Uh, our good yeah. friends uh, Karen Hunt, who's on Vision Radio, and a hubby Greg. They've got a great church yeah. there. Tell us all about that. Yeah. Well, um, we've been doing these book launches where we have – either a high tea or an afternoon tea or a morning tea. Sometimes we put that, um, you know, women can dress and 
<laughs> dress in garden party casual, but um, just a time to value and honour women and to hear about the book and um, to hear about how we've been lied to uh, in, our, in the church and how we've lost something really, really valuable. So we're having one this afternoon in Townsville uh, at, at 2 o'clock and then we're going to Ingham after that. And, and we'll also be having one, so that's in uh, Ingham in, on Wednesday, and then we're going down to Air and also to Proserpine. So yes. we'll be down there on the weekend and we'll be running some of those then. Wonderful, Cindy. Well, it's so good to catch up with you and we pray for the Lord's blessing on you and that this book impacts many people's lives around the world. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.